<laughs> is this fella, Jeremy, now. <laughs> so, good. so 18 years ago, I went to um, my first TED conference. This is the original TED conference, not the current version of the TED conference, the one that was organized by uh, Richard Werman, and that's how I kind of got this idea. Um, it was the dawn of the digital age. The room was full of names that became legendary, the people who invented the personal computer, people who invented online shopping. Um, it was major powerful minds and a lot of new digital technology. And I was there because Richard Wormern had heard about Speaker's Corner. So with all of this super fancy digital technology, uh, I came to show them a little video of this uh, telephone booth converted into a video booth, which I stuck on the edge of uh, my television building and uh, out popped what eventually came to be known as user-generated content. And um, it captivated people, and uh, to everyone's surprise, certainly mine, it became the hit of that particular conference. Um, I got to know Richard Woman, and at the end of the experience, I said to them, hey, have you ever done one of these outside of Monterey? That's where the conference was located. And he said, no, but I've thought about it. And I said, hey, how about we do one in Toronto? And, and that was the dawn of Idea City. It was called TED City in the year 2000. The following year, Richard pretended to retire. He sold his conference. I couldn't use the TED word. The conference is about ideas, and thus was Idea City born. So that sets the scene. During that conference, I was between talks, uh, wandering around the lobby, and bumped into Jeremy. Jeremy had a new device in his hands at the time. It was a palette on which he could create art. He convinced me to sit for him, and I will now leave him to pick up the story. Hey, thank you very much. Yeah, so 18 years ago, um, I was there using a, a pen on a, a tablet called a Wacom tablet, and I had the great pleasure of painting um, the portrait of Moses. Um, and what I've come to share with you today is actually a little bit of my digital art studio and some of the wonderful tools and also some of the amazing things that are happening now um, that allow artists to create uh, paint. Um, but before I get there, um, I was very inspired um, by uh, Rick's uh, presentation. And he ended there with David Bowie. And uh, it takes me back to that time when I painted Moses, because in fact, one of the first digital experiments I did with paint, and I've drawn since I was a little kid, and I had a whole career in physics. I went to Oxford and sold superconducting magnets for about 12 years, um, but I've been a full-time artist for the last sort of 18, 19 years or so. Um, so one of my experiments when I first uh, came across digital painting was uh, a uh, painting of the transitions of David Bowie, uh, ch, ch ch changes going through some of his different persona. So I thought, uh, what a uh, great way to kick things off here. So Connie, if we could have that um, first little bit of video. I'm very inspired by people. I love drawing people from life, most of all. I'm inspired by music and dance. I'm a dancer myself. Um, I've had the great pleasure and honor of working with Cirque du Soleil, and I spent seven weeks creating live improvised digital painting with Corel Painter and uh, doing that in their Tapi Rouge VIP tent at the Totem show when it was here in San Francisco. <laughs> I've also had the great pleasure of working um, on quite a number of occasions with the Fine Art Museums of San Francisco, that's the De Young Museum and the Legion of Honor, where I've been hired to perform live art as what's called a tableau vivant. I've been uh, Edgar Degas, Vincent van Gogh, you know, I had to sacrifice my ear for that one. Pablo Picasso. I sewed it back on, don't worry.
So, so this is the portrait and one that artist I, in history oh. who probably. This is the portrait that I did 18 years ago of Moses, and I told him when I first saw him today, which was you know 18 years, the first time I'd seen him. I said, "Wow, you haven't changed a bit," and he really hasn't. So. Um, what I'm uh, going to share with you today is, first of all, um, I'm, I'm working here with uh, the next generation of the tablet that I started off with uh, 18 years ago. And so with this tablet, I'm able to apply pressure with a stylus and control various parameters of my brush stroke. Um, so it's incredibly powerful. And of course, since those days uh, in the mid-90s, uh, I can also use just a, a plain digit, the original digit, the finger, and uh, work with that as my means of making a brush stroke on the canvas. But what I'm really excited to share with you today is something that is actually um, pre-release about a year ago. Um, I heard that there was a company called Leap Motion, and they were developing a infrared 3D motion detection system that allowed um, gesture to be used to control various functions on the computer. And what you'll notice um, is as I I basically have a three-dimensional painting zone, so it starts, and you can see where it starts, because you see the disc go from yellow, there's a little yellow, and as I lean in, and the way I get control of this, it's like learning a musical instrument, is I lean in, and as I lean in, the deeper and deeper I go into the z-axis, depending on the brush, different, um, different parameters um, appear. So let's have a look here, and Let's go and pick, for instance, um, the Geo Pencil. And let's also work maybe with a different color here. So what you'll notice is that um, what I'm able to do as an, as an artist is, so this is a really interesting pencil. I'll do it again, it's the blue. Um, I can get thin lines, and then as I tilt my finger, it's literally like um, rubbing the, a thick lead on the paper. So you can really get from thin to thick a variation of quality of line. Um, what's really uh, quite fascinating, and let me just uh, change color here, is that you can actually introduce more than one finger. And what comes out of that in the case of this brush is a little bit like a cat's cradle. And what you'll notice is that I have a, a way to hold it there. And the same applies here with the ribbon. Um, I'm just going to show you uh, one of the interesting things here, is that if I hold two fingers up, I'm able to control the, a value saturation triangle. And this is very much like a traditional artist would actually mix a color. So I've gone for very saturated, and I'll go for a sort of blue, and then I'll just hold it. So now I've got the blue, and now I'm going to paint with multiple fingers. So what we've got here, it's ironic, is that it's taken all this time for digital paint to get back to good old-fashioned finger painting with 10 fingers. Um, but it is here. The technology is here, and it's amazing. Um, this is coming out. Um, in, on July 22nd, and so everybody here uh, can actually have a go at it at that point. I'll just show one more to illustrate the concept here. And this is a, uh, a, line, a line spray, so let's just do a little bit of a different color. So I'll pick out of a color palette, and let's go for, let's go up here for the green, okay. And so you, what you can see here is that as I was moving my finger, I'm literally uh, able to sp spew paint uh, directionally from my finger. So there's all sorts of incredible things. But what I would like to do now is actually create um, a follow-up to my portrait of Moses, and we'll see what happens. So Moses, uh, could I please uh, put you on, on the spot here? Jeremy, I must confess, 
Now that I see uh -huh. that portrait you did years ago, I remember thinking at the time that it looked more like you than it looked like me. Uh huh. <laughs> Don't you think so? Well, you know, it, it, it it's, you know what's funny is that often uh, I, you know, portraits end up like a self-portrait. Right. Um, so, um, in, in starting this portrait, I thought, first of all, I would share um, something about how I, as an artist, relate to the use of leap motion. Like, why, you know, is it a gimmick or is it a serious art tool? Why am I so interested in moving my hands and creating paint on the canvas? And when uh, Rick was playing his 50s rock and roll, it really drove home, I mean, I could hardly sit down, it really drove home the linkage for me um, as a dancer, I'm a, I'm a swing dancer and I've always loved 50s rock and roll, the linkage to me that what, what this leap painting does is it brings home the uh, ability as, to essentially bring more dance into my art. So Rick, if you uh, could just come and give us a couple of bars of Hound Dog. I hope you don't mind just watching a couple of bars of Hound Dog. Uh, I'm gonna get a little bit of, uh, I mean, I, I love 50s rock and roll, so yeah. we'll... Are you ready? Yeah, always ready. You ain't no more Okay. That's not bad for a six-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> so let's first of all, I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to change my brush here. Uh, I'm going to start with an oil bristle brush. So let's let's just move over to the oil bristle. Will you be able to talk to it soon? Yep. Oh, right that's a, As in, hurry up, move over to Right. Home. And uh, let me just have a look here. So I'm going to pick, I think I'll pick... Um, Do you want me looking at you? Yes, that would be great. I think I'll pick that color. And I'm just going to clear the page. There we go. Ah. I just actually have to meditate just for a moment. Ah. And I, I made a glancing reference before. This wasn't planned. Jeremy is in town for a wedding. Th this was arranged <laughs> was about looking, four days ago. <laughs> looking through his, his list of okay. contacts, remembered that I lived here, gave me a call. <laughs> OK. So if you just look at me, yeah. and we'll see, um, see what happens. So. So what you're going to notice, I'll, I'll explain a little bit of process as I'm painting. So the first thing I want to do, especially since I've got very limited time, is I'm going to just map out a little bit of the composition. And so I'm just going to move in. And what you'll notice is that I'm leaning in to what's called a hover plane. So if you imagine in three-dimensional space, that there's a, an area that, is, that you can move your cursor around and that's inactive. And then there's an area that as you move in, you start to engage with the digital canvas. Now in this particular brush that I'm starting with here, I'm just going to lay down some basic compositional marks. And so I'm looking at, basically, just looking at a shadow map um, of Moses' face. So I'm not trying to get detail. One of the things that, in, you know, there's many ways to approach painting a portrait. Uh, sometimes I might just do a pencil drawing and keep it very contour related. Um, other times I might sort of work tonally uh, first and then, and then bring in uh, more de line detail. Just going to go for a little bit of darker tone here. Go for dark brown. Um, one of the things is actually we were just discussing this earlier, because uh, Moses asked me, he said, how did you have that, you know, 
painting you did 18 years ago. <laughs> and, uh, and I found it within seconds of thinking as I was coming to here for a wedding, like, ah, I should look up Moses. And here it was. And the reason is that I've been very meticulous over the years about the way that I um, name and archive all my artwork from basically the get-go when I first used digital paint in 1991. So, um, so what I'm going to do here is we've got a little undo button there, <laughs> and then we've got an iterative save. And so what you see happening here is it's just saving the file. So as I work, I save uh, stages as I go. And let's change the brush here. And this time, I'm going to pick a chalk. And I, something I'm really uh, interested to show you with this chalk, um, you, you can, although you see me painting with my finger, um, if, if you look at the leapmotion.com website, you'll see people using chopsticks. You can pretty much use any non-reflective object. And it is read by the infrared detector as essentially a finger. So what I like with chalk, if, for instance, I want to work with a negative space, and so what I'm doing is I'm using a regular paintbrush just because it feels really comfortable. And by the way, one, some of the questions I've been asked about this technology is one of them is, does it get really tiring on the arm? No, you know, it's like martial arts, it's like dance. You, you adopt a posture that's comfortable, you know, you don't do it like that. It's actually much more relaxing than if I'm doing a traditional painting on an easel and having to raise my arm up. So, um, what you'll notice here is that as I just start entering the hover zone and pull back a bit, I get a really nice paper texture. I'm going to pull back. And so you notice I go now to the other side. I'm going to pull back a bit. And I'm actually going to change the paper texture. So again, showing you how using gesture, so that's going to be in current brush, using gesture, I'll pick a pebble paper. And now watch what happens as I go in. And we see there. I've now able to paint with a different texture. So let's just bring that compositional element here. Do an iterative save. And I'm going to change brush here um, to a brush called a sergeant brush. It's named after John Singer Sargent. And I think I'm going to change color as well. So I'll go for the color wheel. I'm going to make this a fairly dark color. So I'm holding two fingers up. I don't know if we can see that. Um, and let's just have a look here. Just going to go in here we go. So what I want you to see here, and I'm going to go in for the, uh, some of the detail here, is that with this brush, it's got an oily sort of feel to it. Um, I'm able to control the thickness very finely by just hovering back and forth. Um, like up here, I'm going to dig right into the Z axis, and you'll see it's, it splurges out. And then go down here. I'm going away, so it's not painting. You're a great subject, by the way. <laughs> Um, Connie, if you want to put on that little bit of music by some friends of mine, Tria Garufa, it's a, a, it's a tango uh, instrumental. This very relaxing music to paint to. I love painting to music. I can barely see the screen, so I can't quite see what's materializing. Okay. But your uh -huh. finger is hardly moving at all. Yeah, that's something that's uh, maybe a little bit surprising. Um, when I want to get a really fine detail... You tickle it. Yeah. And I have to breathe as well. I have to remember to breathe, yeah. 
you know, when I first had a go at this uh, leap motion, and I should say that the software I'm using came out of, you know, I introduced Leap and Corel, because I've used Corel Painter for 20 years, and as soon as I saw Leap, I said, oh wow, they, this, you know, Corel have got to do something. So this software is called Corel Painter Freestyle. And it's actually gonna be a free download when they bring the Leap Motion Detector out. I knew the founder of Corel. Oh really? Yeah, Michael. Is it still a Canadian company? Um, you know what, I'm not sure of the exact. It's, they're still in Ottawa. Wow, that's a yeah. good sign. Okay. I know it's, uh, it makes you want to dance. Isn't And is there someone who could just give me a time check? Because actually I can't see the countdown clock. Well, we're, we're, we're there. We're, at, we're uh, already there. Yeah. I know these people are dying of hunger. Maybe we can keep working on it over the lunch break? Yeah. And then um, they can see it when they come back. Whoa, what was that? Ah. <laughs> I'm just going to take off the enable. That was... Now, if that were real paint, uh -huh. that'd be a real problem, wouldn't it? Yeah, but actually, yeah. Uh, one of the things is with, um, with digital paint, with digital paint, you can sort of work into it. Let me just see what. But how do you get rid of that error? That, uh... ah, what you do is you build it into it. So you go to the current <laughs> brush, and you just build. You could undo it, <laughs> or we could use. Um, you can use a blender brush. Well, why don't I do in. that, Jeremy? Why don't yep. let people go to lunch? Mm -hmm. We'll keep at it, and then. It'll okay. be finished by the time they get back? Yep. All right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and how far do you get? Let's see. Oh, okay. Good looking fella.